What's up folks, Brent here with Hammer Armament. Today we're going to take a long-term look back at the Staccato XC. Now many of you might have stumbled across our channel from the original Staccato XC review about three or four years ago. So we figured it's time to go back and really milk that cow dry. Just, you know, really work that teat till it's red and sore. We had originally planned on doing this 10,000 round kind of update by late spring, mid-summer 2020. Well, then things got real weird for a while. Ammo got expensive. Can't remember exactly what happened, but I think the mayor of New York murdered a bunch of seniors and everyone started cosplaying as Mortal Kombat ninjas. Got really weird for a while. But suffice to say, 10,000 rounds got real expensive real quick. And what should have been a couple grand in ammo started to add up to more than what this gun is worth. So, um, which no small feat considering the cost of this sucker. So let's get in there and squeeze these nipples. The main things that I wanted to update folks on are reliability, wear, problems, upgrades, you know, that kind of thing so that people can get an idea of whether or not this gun is actually worth the price tag. Unfortunately, most gun reviews, you know, gun comes out brand new, a bunch of people review it, and then you kind of don't hear about it for a long time. So I really wanted to go back, especially with a more high dollar gun like this, and give people a better idea what you can kind of expect out of this thing after years of use to see if it's really going to be worth it or not. Now, if you want to stop right there and get the TLDR version, yes, this gun is worth it. As a thank you for saving you some time, I'd appreciate it if you dropped a like and just let the video play in the background while you go drink a beer. Now, if you've seen the original review for this, you know I put this thing through some pretty extensive torture tests. Oh, that's right, buddy. You got 10 years worth of these stupid fucking videos to watch. Since then, I've taken it pretty easy on it and just, you know, shot the living fuck out of it. Rain, mud, snow, and heat. Now, 10,000 rounds can either be a lifetime of ammo or half training season, depending on how deep your pockets are and how dedicated you are. Um, on top of that, this is a work tool for us. So, the mileage this old girl has seen is... A lot worse than what most people would actually put on it. Not only had I used this exclusively for USPSA and multi-gun matches for a few years, but it was also my primary carry gun, as well as used for test fitting holsters in the shop. Once the ammo crunch set in, um, I started to push myself to dry fire a lot more as well, and I estimate that between matches, practice, work, realistically I've got well over 100,000 draws on this gun alone. So. Um, should also be noted that when I originally wrote this little script a year or so ago, I've put more than 10,000 rounds on this gun. It's actually sitting at about 16,500-ish. So let's have a quick look at how this thing is actually held up. Now the finish on this thing has been phenomenal. Um, it's showing some signs of wear on the sharp edges. Um, and I don't baby this thing. I don't abuse it intentionally either. But this gun sees work every single day, either in a match, dry fire, testing holsters, concealed carry, some days, all of the above. The finish on the XC is legitimately one of the best I've ever seen. I know that some other guys have had issues with other staccatos and their finish, but I, I can't speak to that. All I can speak to is this particular one. Our other staccatos don't get quite the same usage as this. So they don't have the same wear patterns yet. The wear this thing's got, it's earned it. Let's talk reliability, maintenance, and issues. I cannot say that this gun has run flawlessly, but it's been really fucking close. 
The most common issue as far as reliability goes was a failure to go into battery. And by most common, I mean that it happened maybe five times in the past 16,000 rounds. The next most common was light primer strikes, which happened twice in a row while trying to shoot a pistol spinner at a major match. So that sucked, but it hasn't happened since then. And that was probably 12,000 rounds ago. So honestly, shit happens. Now, as far as the first issue goes, I did change the recoil spring at approximately six or 7,000 rounds ago. I don't remember what the exact recommended life was, but I think Staccato said it's between five and 7,000 rounds that the recoil sh spring should be replaced. So it was a little bit over that. A Staccato rep also informed me that the XC has a seven pound recoil spring and it should be replaced with the same, which of course I ignored. And I replaced it with an eight pound spring. This was after talking to the, you know, experts. They told me the eight pound spring should give it that little bit more of a punch uh, for reliability, fighting against the failure to go into battery, etc. I actually picked up several different springs from Dawson that range from uh, seven to 11 pounds, gave them all a try. And I didn't notice any substantial difference, honestly, in any of them. So I just kind of went with the closest to what Staccato recommends, but giving it just that little bit extra. But all in all, as far as reliability goes, this gun has been great. Um, Again, I've run this gun in the cold, the rain, in muddy, wet matches, rolling around in sandy, dry areas with a variety of different ammo. And it has a phenomenally low amount of malfunctions. At this point, I'm kind of wondering like how dirty this XC can get and still not malfunction. Like the mags stop walking back, but whatever. You're dirty. 90% of the issues I've had happened in the cold, which somewhat makes sense. The gun has tight tolerances, and um, if the gun all starts getting cold, it gets a little bit less viscous. So I can see where that would slow down the slide enough to induce the failure to go into battery issues, which again have happened extremely rarely. I have learned that keeping 2011s really well lubed helps in pretty much all cases. Not like oil all over the damn place, but in the spots that you're supposed to oil, I just put the friggin' oil lure. There are two other issues that I've had with the gun that aren't specifically a reliability problem. When I first got this gun, I had a hell of a time getting the cover plate for the optic to stay in place, even with blue Loctite. So when I installed my SRO, I used red Loctite. For the love of God, and all that is holy, do not do this. My reasoning was that even though red Loctite is, you know, permanent, I've used it lots in the past and been able to muscle it apart when needed. What I didn't consider was that that was always on like big parts that had some meat on it. Like red Loctite can be defeated with muscle when you put a big Jesus pipe wrench on it, but you can only put so much muscle into an 832 screw before you strip the head on it. If you can't use muscle, then you need to use heat to beat the Loctite, which happens to be about 500 degrees freedom. And 500 degrees Fahrenheit temps right beside the optic is a recipe for a bad time. Needless to say, I ruined my SRO, no matter how much I tried to protect it from the heat. Basically, I melted all the electronics in it. I sent that optic back to Trigicon and while this fuckery was clearly not covered by warranty, they did fix it for a quite reasonable price and get it back to me pretty quickly. It took a long time for it, them to like get started on it, but once my order was processed, it was like a couple days and it was shipped out again. It's been working fine since then, and that was like three years ago. So three years ago on like a refurb SRO, I'm pretty happy with it. So I learned my lesson and used blue Loctite, and I haven't had the same issue since. So I don't know why I had the issues with the cover plate to begin with, but the optic has only come loose once since then, 
and it was after quite a few thousand rounds like lots of practice later the moral of the story is don't use red loctite and just check your screws every once in a while now after that fiasco i did pick up a jaeger works hood for the sro i just wanted to make sure that this would work with our level two retention holsters and also i really like the idea of a little bit added protection after fucking one of these things up once i didn't really want to do it again but to be honest i hated that little protection hood um well, I like the idea of the added protection, and I think the hood itself was of good quality. Um, I didn't like how high it made the optics sit, and I didn't like the added bulk of it. It also collects like dust and goo between the hood and the optic, which is a pain in the ass to clean. The suppressor height sights are pretty useless when you use the hood, which isn't really a big concern for me in like competition, but like at worst, you'll fuck up a stage if the optic goes down. But if you use one for concealed carry, that could be a bigger issue. Doesn't mean that it's a bad idea or that you shouldn't get one. I just I didn't like it. So to sum up reliability, the very few issues I've had, and I mean, you don't even have to unzip to count them all. We're either in cold weather with a fairly dry gun, ammo-related, or idiot-induced. There may have been a few that were part of the break-in period of the gun, but again, not much. This surprisingly has been the most reliable gun I've ever owned. This Princess 2011 gun is the most reliable gun. For me, the biggest issue with this gun has always been like, what is its true specific purpose? I think uh, every gun should have a purpose. I'm a shooter. I'm not a collector. If I have multiple guns that all do the exact same thing, that's just they're taking up space in the safe. They're taking up space in your budget. So what's the point? In regards to this one, it's built like a high quality competition gun, but doesn't fit within the rules of any division aside from open, which puts it against the real, you know, race guns in the USPSA or IPSC. They've got, you know, guns built with massive comps, frame mounted optics, heavy grips, higher power factor ammo, which all put this at a disadvantage. It does fit uh, really well in like three gun open division where the guns aren't like full on race guns. They're a little bit more practical. But that's kind of a niche group that doesn't really seem to be the target market market for staccato and while this gun has proven to be very surprisingly reliable the price point puts it i'd say probably out of the realm of realistic duty gun in most cases for concealed carry it's it's really on the large side uh, especially if you pair it with like a good light like a surefire x300 but then again, it actually carries quite well, especially when paired with that light because of the way it balances the weight of it. Um, with the right holster, it balances very well. It doesn't kind of like topple over the belt or anything like that like shorter guns can tend to want to do. And with a good belt, it's not difficult to carry this with that light on it and even a spare mag as well. Maybe it doesn't need to have a specific purpose. Maybe it just doesn't need to be just a duty gun or just a USPSA carry optics gun or just a concealed carry gun. Like maybe it can simply be so awesome to shoot that you use it however you want. Maybe it can check so many boxes that you can't nail down like one specific task for it. And that's okay. Maybe it's just the perfect pistol. Oh, and I almost forgot. Um, in the last video we did on this thing, there was a few people complaining because they didn't have an actual trigger pull gauge. So now that I have one, let's go ahead and give this a quick look. Let's see here. Let's set this up. Zero. Make sure we pull the uh, grip safety. Get that nice and straight. Oh, let's see here. Looks like just under... Two and a half pounds. Seriously, the, the number, the trigger pull number, it's it doesn't make that big of a deal. It's a light and crisp trigger. Who cares if it's 2.5 pounds or 2.3 pounds? Thanks for watching. If you made it this far in the video, I'd appreciate it if you go ahead and drop a like and maybe even consider subscribing. It doesn't mean anything. Like, 
You can like a video and subscribe and then click the notification bell and make sure it's clicked to all notifications and you'll still not get videos. And then you click on one goddamn cat video or one fucking Taylor Swift video and then that is all you'll see in your goddamn feed for the next two years. So, yeah. Just like when you're going to bed tonight, just put this video on repeat on your iPad and just kind of set it in the living room with the volume turned down and I'll see you in the morning.